just do that a little bit louder. Happy Sabbath, everyone. And this is for both of you are in house and those who are our online audience. We want to thank you in a very special way for joining us this glorious Sabbath morning for world worship. We are asking you, as Pastor Monroe does, please like and share. We want to make sure as you are on the YouTube channel that you are going to share so others, others will be able to enjoy the warmth of the Sabbath this morning with our Maranatha family. On behalf of our pastor, Pastor London Monroe, I want to let you know he apologized for not being here, but he's elsewhere doing mission for God. Amen? You know that he, has, he wears many hats, and sometimes he's here, and other times he has to be elsewhere. I'm just asking that we keep him in prayer. Pray him up as he go elsewhere to do God's work. Amen? This morning, I want to ask us to pay very special attention to the following announcement. Our theme for this year is, we're better together. we better together. Why so? Because we are prioritizing unity, family, and community. We are encouraging a loving and welcoming church. And we want to let make sure that we pray as we do this, that we pray fervently for unity. Unity, I said, we pray fervently for unity because a church united can do great things for God. Amen? We also want to pray, continue to pray for Brooklyn Zone Area Crusade 2024. Our crusade is entitled Love, Our Love Series. Our Love Series Crusade 2024, it starts from June 1 to June 22nd. And we want to make sure that we keep that in prayer, not just because we are going to be there, but because we know other people will be coming there and being there. We also want to pray specifically for the person who's going to lead out in the crusade. As we know, it's a broken area zone crusade, and we have nine churches that combine. But God has laid his hands very special on our very own pastor, London Leopold Monroe, to preach the series, the love series, for three weeks. So we know that we're going to pray up. We're already praying him up, but we want to continue praying up. But you see, the example Christ God gave in the Garden of Eden, when he made Adam, he created Adam. He didn't just create Adam because it was insufficient. So he gave Adam his Eve, amen? <laughs> And Sister Monroe is smiling, because she probably know where I'm going with that. Pastor Monroe has his Eve alongside with him, and it's in the person of Sister Lady, First Lady Monroe, Amira Monroe. We have Jana and Matthew. So we're asking you to not just pray up Pastor Monroe, but as we kneel and as we seek God to pray up the man of God, also pray up the woman of God, Sister Amira Monroe, call her by name. The children, Matthew Monroe and Amira Monroe. Amen? Amen. Now, my question to you this morning. Are you willing to see your loved ones safe in the kingdom of God? That should be a resounding amen, right? So because of that, because of your amen, we are continuing to ask you to put your names, your family names on the prayer list. We have a prayer scroll. Sister Karen, or Ella Karen, is a prayer coordinator for this, for Marinata. So she's going to, later on, she's going to pass out a list, and it's going to be outside, that you put the names of those you are praying for. We're already praying for the names you've given. Pastor Monroe takes it home every Sabbath. I have it with me. We're praying, and we agonize him with God for souls. Pastor Monroe is asking for 150 souls during this, through this crusade. Amen. But I believe in the concept of Acts chapter 1. In the day of Pentecost, when Pentecost came, that 3,000 souls were added to the kingdom. It didn't stop there because the Bible says every day more souls were added. So we're not going to limit God. This is what we're asking God for, 150 and beyond. We also want us to, to help you, to remind you that as you pray for souls, 
to remind you that our preparation continues and we meet every Sunday after evening at 4 p.m. So we're encouraging every committee member to meet us on the Zoom prayer line, the Zoom meeting line, and that we will meet to encourage each other to be there. Good news, good news, Elder Moore. We started a Bible class last night. Amen. Let the church say amen. I thought I was going to hear better. Amen. Those online, you're welcome to join us as we start our Zoom Bible class last night for preparation for our love series. And we started with um, Ella Brown. Ella Brown, we had a few members came on last night, but we're encouraging you every Friday night at 7 p.m. And yes, members, we want you to come on, but you also have a responsibility. You give us names that you are praying for. Invite those persons to come on. Invite our youth and our children and our young adults to come on because we want to make sure that they too enjoy what Elder Brown is bringing to our focus. Um, next Sabbath will be our safety Sabbath, which is led out by Sister Silcott, who is not here today. So we'll be having our own fire drill. And we're asking you to come prepared for our, that. Do you, have, um, do you have something up there, a video on that? Um, walk with comfortable shoes because we're going to have our fire drill. And we want to make sure that as you come, we prepare for everything. We also want to say thank you for sister, to Sister Jennifer for the health promotion, for the... Um, the in the education department and all of those who continue to promote God's work. We want to say special thank you to our women's ministry leaders, Sister Mira Monroe, as she remind the team, the women of the church, of the women's retreat coming up. So we want to remind them, Sister Monroe, you want to come up? All right, we're going to ask Sister Monroe to continue to give us this um, promotion on that. We also want to encourage our officers, each and every officer of the church, to do the child protection screening, which will be a, there'll be a special presentation April 21st. You're going to see it, I think Pastor says on the screen. Do we have it on the screen for the child protection training coming up April 21st? Sister Monroe, amen, amen. We also want to continue to remind you that we have the AY Memorial Weekend Camp coming up. See Sister Joan and Sister Robinson on that. Um, we're still soliciting your prayers for our members, um, our children, Pathfinder, who will be traveling to Wyoming in August. 
We have 25 persons so far. They'll be going to Wyoming, Gillette, August 5th to 11th for International Campery. We already have 25 persons, so we want to ask you to donate if you can, but to continue to keep the leader and the team as they prepare to travel. Amen. We also want to give a shout out to um, our sick and shouting who are doing well and coming along. By the grace of God, we have Sister Concy Barrett, Sister Enid McCray, Sister Opal Medley, Sick Sister Backers. We also want to ask to pray for those who are shut in. We have Sister Viola Spaulding, who we went to self communion with last week, and she was very happy. She asked for anointing, so a few of the elders will be going there today to do a special anointing on her. Pray for our healing. We also um, shout out to Sister Concy Barrett and brought our elder, our dearest elder, Karim Henry. He had another surgery on the 11th, so we're going to pray him up and continue to pray that his healing will go according to God's plan. We also want to remember Sister Lasora, our praise team leader. Remember her in our prayer. And if we forgot anyone, remind us. As we leave, remind us that we have that person or this member who is not on the list and we need to add them on the list and so as we continue we're gonna give a shout out birthday shout out to sister who sister marie had a surgery when yesterday yesterday keep sister marie in prayer everybody knows sister marie henry lift her up in prayer and now we shout out our birthday celebrants we have Marcella mighty mama mighty I love you happy birthday happy birthday mama mighty Denisha Douglas Denisha I know mom probably somewhere watching happy birthday to our Denisha we have Brandon Sandy wow happy birthday Brandon and we have somebody in house I don't know if we know that person at all. That person's name is Hamlin Ashton. Anybody knows that person? Happy birthday, Sister Ashton. Then we have, woo, another great mom of the house, Sister Shirley Eversley. Happy birthday, Sister Eversley. We have Sister Jacqueline Fuller. Happy birthday, happy birthday. Don't forget to clap, happy birthday. Flo Smith, happy birthday. Sister June Williamson, happy birthday, Sister June. Um, Sister Katoy, our very own Sister Gloria Katoy, happy birthday, Sister Katoy. We have Cleon Quinton, happy birthday, Cleon, happy birthday. Alexander Kingston, happy birthday. Leon Den Denning, oh, happy birthday, Leon. Stephen Rosemond, happy birthday. We forgot a birthday person. How is that possible? <laughs> we did, right? We're going to still shout out happy birthday to our first lady, Sister Amira Monroe. She celebrated her birthday on the Friday. Happy birthday, Sister Monroe. We see God's blessing on you and how it flows. And then for our anniversaries, we have Sandra and Leslie Burrows. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. Do we have that video for the Child Protective Serve, um, Training? Thank you so much, AV team, for what you do. And so as we worship God today, the program will continue. May the Spirit of God abide with you. And I want to remind you, as we go forward on a personal ministry level, I want our personal ministry team to please stand. Sister Moy Brooks. To stand, she is the secretary for the personal ministry department. Sister Moy, please stand. Sister Claudette Layton, another personal ministry person, um, worker. I want you to remember that these persons are working with personal ministry. Everybody here is personal ministry, amen? Because we're doing God's work. But we have Sister Moy and Sister Claudette. These are the persons that when you need books, you go to them for books. You want anything, we have sufficient books in our library. So if you want books and you want tracks, contact Sister Moy, contact Sister Claudette or myself, and we will make sure if we don't have it, we're going to give it to you. So I want to thank Sister Moy and Sister Layton for what you're doing.
personal ministry department. And you may have a seat. Thank you so very much. We want to remind you that every person here is an evangelist. And God has called us to be evangelists because we all are living in the presence of a holy God. He has blessed us. He has saved us from sin. And we walk in with him. We all have a story. We all have a story to tell that we serve a recent Savior. We serve a God who took us out of the depths of sin and saved us. And so the word of God said, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. I am tasting, right, Ella Brown? We all here are tasting and see the goodness of God. Don't you want others to taste and see that the Lord is good? So see Sister Ella Karen more, and there is a list that you can sign up for. We are talking about saving souls for the kingdom of God. And we're talking about that evangelistic love series. Coming up June 1 to June 22nd, we meet every Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday morning on our prayer line, and we're asking you to join. If you're not on the list of any of the Brooklyn area records, let me know. I'm going to add you to the list so you can join us because more prayer, more power. May God continue to bless you as we go forward with the program. Have a heavenly sitting, and God bless each and every one of you. Amen, amen. One minute. Hello everyone, our camp sign is up to remind you that camp is up and running. Don't forget to bring your fees in, we have a short time left. Thanks for those who have contributed and for those who are about to contribute, please remember, bring your contribution. We're asking to either you, you help to pay for someone or a part, whatever you have, bring it. We are going to camp 2024 by God's grace and with your support. So remember, camp is almost here. We need to finish this off. Thank you. Pleasant Sabbath, Maranatha. Well, it's the opportunity that was given to me to do the welcome today. So welcome. I'm going to do it in a different way. W, welcome him in the Lord with great joy and honor people like him. Philippians 2, 27. E, enter into his gates with thanksgiving, into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him be, and bless his name. Psalms 100, verse 4. L, let brotherly love continue. Be not forgetful, entertain strangers, for thereby some have entered angels unaware. 
Hebrew 13, 1 and 2. C, contribute to the needs of the saints and seek to show hospitality. Romans 12, 13. O, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Psalms, 37, Psalms 34, verse 3. M, may you be blessed by the Lord, maker of heaven and earth. Psalms 115, verse 15. E, everyone hears, who's, everyone hears these words, my put them into practice. It's like a wise man who built his house on a rock. Matthew 7 verse 26. Say welcome. Welcome one, welcome all. Welcome online viewers. Welcome the members of the Maranatha Seventh-day Adventist Church. Thank you very much. Sabbath day, Lord. I hope that as we sing, Lord, you will minister to your people and bless the hearts of those in this congregation, Lord. And in my prayer, amen. Our first song is
sound the battle cry. Mm Bible to Ezekiel 19 verse 1 to 14 and we will read alternatively. That's Ezekiel 19 1 to 14. Moreover, take thou up a lamentation for the princes of Israel. And she brought up one of her whelps, which became a young lion, and it learned to catch the prey. It devoured men. Now when she saw that she had waited and her hope was lost, then she took another of her whelps and made him a young lion. their desolate palaces and he laid waste their cities and the land was desolate and the fullness thereof by the noise of his warring and they put in inward in chains and brought in to the king of Babylon they brought in into holes that his voice should no more be heard upon the mountains of Israel. And she had strong rods for the scepters of them that bear rule, and her stature was exalted among the thick branches, and she appeared in her height with the multitude of her branches. And 
and now she is planted in the wilderness and in a dry and thirsty land. Fourteen and last together, and fire is gone out of rod of her branches, with art devoured her fruit, so that she had no strong rod to be a scepter to rule. This is a lamentation and shall be for a lamentation. Here in the reading of God's holy word. And welcome back to Graceville, where God's love is everywhere. It's me, Pastor Anastasia, and I'm so super duper excited that you've joined me today as we learn more about our best friend, Jesus. Today's special teacher comes to us all the way from Tanzania where my friends Noreen and Noeva have prepared a beautiful song just for us. Let's listen in. Blessed do I, despite of all I see, Lord, I believe. For help my unbelief, I choose to trust you. No matter what I feel, let faith to rise. Let faith to rise. For my champ is not dead, he is alive. Oh, and he already knows my every need. And surely he will come and rescue me. God of miracles, come. We need your supernatural love to break through. Nothing's impossible. You're the God of miracles. God of miracles. And see the kingdom come, I lift my eyes. Oh, for the battle has been won. My God is faithful. And every single word he said is true. Thanks, girls. That was amazing. Boys and girls, remember, if you want to share your gifts and talents for Jesus, please ask your parents or guardians to inbox me, and I'd be happy to share it with our friends. time and it's always such an extra special treat because we never know who or what we're gonna meet with our friend Ryan from Canada. Well to find out more about God's creation you'll just have to come along with us. Hello boys and girls and welcome again to Major Time at Graceville. Today we're gonna be talking about fruit flies. Let's tune in. Fruit flies are beetles, and there are over 1,500 species in the world. The females lay up to 2,000 eggs in their lifetime, and these eggs become adult fruit flies in a very short period. This is why they are considered pests, because they multiply and get out of control quickly. They can also spread bacteria that cause diseases, so we should take out old food and wipe up spills as soon as possible. Fruit flies like overripe fruit and decomposing vegetables. They especially like the smell of alcohol. For example, wine and fermenting fruit. However, they do not like the smell of eucalyptus, basil, peppermint, clove, lavender, or lemongrass. 
When a fruit fly sees another dead fruit fly, they become old faster. Some even die soon after. Scientists believe that something in their brain makes them feel very, very sad and do not return to their normal beetle life. Proverbs 17.22 says, A cheerful heart is good medicine, but a crushed spirit dries up the bones. When we frown, it makes others sad, but when we smile, it makes their days better. Bye, boys and girls. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time. That was so cool. And the best part is we're back right on time to check in on Melissa. I wonder how her week went. Let's go. Hey, Pastor Nastasia. My teacher used a true story to give us the most amazing lesson on faith. Sounds interesting. Yeah, there was a town that experienced a terrible drought. So they gathered together to pray for rain. Funny thing is that only one kid showed up with an umbrella. Now that's what I call praying with faith. Trusting and believing that not only does God hear us, but he also answers our prayers. Wait a minute. That reminds me of our theme for this week, which simply says, pray with faith. Let me hear my friends. They say it. Pray with faith. And our memory verse is found in Matthew 21, verse 22. And it simply says, if you believe, you will receive what? you asked for in prayer. Let me hear my friend Ethan say it. If you believe, you will receive anything you ask for in prayer. Matthew 21 verse 22. Great job everyone! Well, I heard about faith and prayer, but I've never heard about the umbrella thing. I wonder if he didn't feel weird. Maybe not, but he wasn't the only one whose prayer for rain was answered by God. That reminds me of the guy in today's story. Actually, he was a prophet who prayed that God would send rain after three and a half years of drought. Can you guess who today's story is about? That's Shishi. I know what prophet that prayed for rain, Elijah. That's right, Christian. Today's story is about Elijah. Go home. I hear the sound of an abundant rain. Elijah said to King Ahab, his words must have seemed very strange, especially since it had not rained for three and a half years. The drought had devastated the land. Then Elijah went up to the top of Mount Carmel, knelt down and prayed for rain. Afterwards, he instructed his servant to look to the sea for signs of rain. He checked seven times before he saw a little cloud about the size of a man's fist rising from the sea. Quickly, the sky became dark, and the winds blew harder and harder as the rain came pouring down. Yes, God answered Elijah's prayer. Wowzers, Lord, teach me to pray with that kind of faith. Amen. God, please teach all of us to pray with faith.
Valley Church. Please stand for today's scripture reading. Today's scripture reading will be taken from Psalms 133. Our reading is one. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for our brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the heel when Aaron dipped, that went down the skirts of his garments, as the dew of Hermon and as the dew of the sun of the summer upon the mountains of Zion. Therefore the Lord commanded the blessing the even life for evermore. There endeth the word of God. Happy summer church. You may be seated. And while you sit, please look in your pocket, in your pocket books and see how much tithes and offering that you could put into the offertory box. Um, the scripture says, bring me all these tithes into the storehouse and prove me now. That's what Jesus says. That's what the word of God says. It says, bring it in the, in the church, into the storehouse, wherever your storehouse is. And it says, prove me. See if I will not open the, the windows of heaven. And it's not just one window. Heavens have a lot of windows. So when that open, blessings would come down. But that's if you obey. There is another scripture that I found this week. Proverbs 3 verse 9. It says, honor the Lord with thy substance. And then it says, honor the Lord with your first fruit of all your increase. So if I get paid, when I get paid and I get paid for $100 and I said, first, I'm going to put away $10 for my rent. Second, I'm going to put away $10 for my car note. Third, I'm going to put away for my trip. Fourth, I'm going to, and I would go down. And the ninth, I would say, I would pay my tithes. Is that what God wants us to do? He said, in verse 9, he said, honor the Lord with your first fruit. So even if it's the same $10 you're giving, if you put God's own first, guess what happened? Verse 10 says, so shall thy barns be filled with plenty. It says, so shall my barns filled with plenty and the press shall burst. You know what that means? You won't have room enough to receive if you put God first in whatever he blesses you with. So as we pick up the tithes and the offering today, just remember what God says and see how he's going to bless you. Let us pray. Eternal God, I just want to thank you. I pray, oh God, that as we stand on your promise, that I know, God, you would always stand on yours. So bless the offering and the tithes now and whatever is in the basket. Help us, oh God, to use it for your, for your honor and for your glory. In Jesus' name.
most righteous and gracious Father in heaven. This morning, we your children approach your throne of grace and mercy. There's nowhere else for us to turn, God. And so this morning, I, your daughter, have nothing in my hands that I bring. But I'm emptying myself so you can fill me, God, and my prayers can reach heaven, your throne would. And so this morning, God, I am presenting this entire congregation in your hands. You know each and every heart. You know the needs. You know the desires. You know what's troubling them. And so, Lord, I ask in the name of Jesus that you give them the ease that they need, the reassurance that they need to understand that you are the burden bearer, to understand that you answer prayers, to understand that you are the great physician, to understand that you are the mighty healer, and there's nothing too big for you. There's nothing too small for you, oh dear God. And so this morning, Lord, visit each individual represented here this morning, each family represented here this morning. And so God, if it's a job, you, oh, you said a cattle upon the hill are yours. If it's finances, God, you said everything belongs to you. Sickness, you will heal us. And if there is, it's, it's marital, God, you are the best that we can take it to. So God, just touch, just touch every person here, God. You said, you know, the very hair on our head. You said, God, that you will contend with anyone that contend with your children. And so, God, you just need us to be obedient. You just need us to walk the path you're asking us to walk this morning. So, Lord, help us to leave here today knowing, not just thinking, but knowing that God is the all-knowing and the all-everything to us. You are our beginning, you are our ending, you are everything in the midst, God. We need to keep you in our lives. And so this morning, God, I lift up the Brooklyn area. I lift up the evangelistic series. I lift up the speaker. I lift up every team that's putting this together. Help the prayer team, the music team. The decoration team. Father, we leave that number 150 in your hands, but we know that you're a big God. And so, God, there's nothing that you cannot do. You will expand that number. And so, Heavenly Father, I ask this morning that when they have come, that you will teach us how to nurture, how to love how to be attentive, how to have a listening ear. Help us, God, to listen more and talk less. I pray, God, for the area in which this, these meetings will be held. I pray for the East New York area. I pray for the Rock B community. I pray for Canarsie. Everywhere, God, your word, you said your word will not return to you void. And so, Holy Spirit, we are just here as agents, just here as disciples to carry out the, the, the command you ask us to go into all the world and preach your gospel. We were the man servant you chose to preach each and every night past the Lawndale Monroe. Oh, God, you have used them in times before. But you have brought him in such a time as this. The times in which we live in, God, is no joke. The times in which we live in, Father, is telling us your words, your prophecy is being fulfilled. And so, Lord, I ask a special double, triple anointing over Pastor Monroe. The words he will say. The things that will come off of his lips. God, that it will be of you. Hide him, God, behind your cross. 
and let the words, let you be seen. I pray, help us, God, to have the unity, the love. Because God, it makes no sense if we don't have any of those character, any of those traits, God. Those people will be baptized and then they will leave. Because we don't have what it takes. And so, God, we ask like the disciples on the day of Pentecost. Bring us together. Bind us together with the cords of love that will never and cannot be broken. I pray for those, oh God, that had surgery in the past and recently, and they're recuperating at home. Father, I pray for total healing. I pray for total restoration. According to your will, and according to your will, you will answer and you will deliver. And so, God, you have chosen a word for us today. And so, Lord, I pray that you be with your man servant. I pray, Heavenly Father, that you wash him from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet. And that we will have receptive hearts, God, to listen to the words, but not to the person that's bringing the word. Because we have to hear your voice. And so, dear Father, help us to be attentive. Help us to be obedient. Once again, God, anoint this congregation for your will and for your way. We thank you, God, whatever it is we fail in asking at this time. Please fail not to grant it to us. We pray for the prayer scroll. We pray for the, the list going around. Heavenly Father, as I outstretch my hand, you see every name on that scroll. You see every name on that list. And so, Heavenly Father, we ask that you will speak to every heart. We ask that you move in a marvelous and a miraculous way that we ourselves would not understand what happened. So, Lord, we thank you for what you're about to do. We thank you for what you've already done. And we thank you for what you will continue to do in and through us. Hear our prayers from heaven, your throne room. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen and amen.
If you want to say amen, there's no place like this place. We need to this place, so this must be the place. So if you are happy to be here, we can learn God's will and take it to your neighbors and friends. Say amen. personal um, religious liberty director I suppose to encourage you to support religious liberty because uh, that liberty is going through a labor pain I'm supposed to bring you good news and bad news right now they are considering three methods one Biometric payment. It's coming very soon. What is that? You want to pay, just rest your hand. The second thing that is being considered is to fly LGBT flag and federal building. under consideration right now. And the third thing is that the Catholic Church is discussing among themselves if they should use potato chip in the communion service. You laugh, I'm telling you what is happening. It's under consideration right now. But you know what the word says. You know what God says when it comes to communion? Whatever is being used to pray to represent the pure body of Jesus. That's why we use a symbolic memorial of bread and wine. Wine from the grape is a symbol of his pure blood. And the bread, the unleavened bread, there's no form of impurity, it's just olive oil. Right? So that is under consideration right now. But that's not my point today. My point today is the Lord has called me to give you a message for the time. I am not in favor. Is the message that comes through that will save the soul. I want us to turn our attention to a portion of scripture which we've had for scripture reading. And there is where we will start. That is Psalm 133. Very short. we do that, we'll bow for prayer. Great God, we want to thank you for your goodness. Thank you for bringing us together in this capacity to learn your will and your way. Teach us, we pray. And guide us in the way of everlasting life. In Jesus' name we pray. so beautifully read but I choose to go over it because it's a point that I want us to get. It says what? Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together. How? In unity. It continues. It is like what? The precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard, that went down to the skirts of his garment. As the Jew of Haman, verse 3, and as the Jew that descended upon the mountains of Zion, for there the Lord commanded the blessing 
Emmanuel, the revelation. This psalm is a very short psalm. But extol the blessedness of brotherly union. Behold how good and how pleasant. It is good in itself. It is good for our honor. It is good for our comfort. It is good because it is solidified. It is good because it renews. It's good because it's sanctified. It's good because it revitalizes. It is a good because it's agreeable to the will of God. It's good because it helps us cooperate as a body of believers. It is good because it is an exemplary thing that we call we are called to imitate with holy nature. The topic of my message united in Christ. So let's take a little dive back into that message with some deep thoughts from the psalm. This psalm, as I said before, is a very short and beautiful poem extolling the blessedness of brotherly unity. And this kind of unity characterizes the meetings of the Israelites at the great festival in Jerusalem. And on these occasions, harmony and brotherly love prevail. You notice the term brethren? In this passage denotes a tie of intimate relationship. And what amazes me is that David sang this poem when he, he, his relatives and friends were hiding in a cave of Absalom. He made mention of oil and the Jew of Harmon. And that oil mentioned is not just common oil, but sacred oil. It was the oil that poured upon Aaron's head at his anointing as high priest, and it had the sweet perfume. And that perfume is a symbol of the brotherly love, which blesses all with a sweet. The Jew of Ammon, likewise, symbolizes refreshment. That is, brotherly love that is born from above refreshes and revives. Brotherly love is the focus of the fellowship we'll enjoy in the heaven. I want to turn your attention to a text in Matthew chapter 5. Verse 23. It says in verse 23, Therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar, and they remember that thy brother had ought against thee, verse 24, leave there thy gift before the altar, and go thy way, and first be reconciled to thy brother, and then come and offer your gift. Do we understand what he said here? I don't think he understands, so I got to help you to understand the passage. Jesus insists here in the text that we must make things right with one another before we can come be re reconciled to God. He 
He said reconciliation is more important than sacrifice. He said that broken relationship can hinder relationship with God. So what he's saying to us, if there is a grievance with your friend and with your, your nearest neighbor, your husband or your wife, we have to resolve it as soon as possible. Otherwise, we are hypocrites if we claim to love God while we hate others. You see, need to understand this, you know. Living out Christ-like principles in the life is far greater value in God's sight than practicing the forms of religion. We are to labor for reconciliation by confessing our faults one to another and humble ourselves to one another. We must do so quickly. Because when there is a breach, two things would happen. One, until reconciliation is sought, we are utterly unfit for holy communion with God and with all the ordinances. Till that is done, all that we do will be. Let me say it this way. Religious exercises are not acceptable to God if they are performed when we are in wrath, when we are in malice, or when we are in envy or in a state of uncharitableness. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 26. He said, Be angry. And sin not. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath. Do not let the sun rise on your wrath even on Sabbath morning. That's why we have six days to make preparation. You prepare your food, you prepare your clothes, and you prepare yourself. That's why you come to worship in here. I don't care much holy hands you want to lift. If it's not done right, there's no blessing. And I said, thank God somebody tell me. Our time on this earth, my friends, is soon finished. And we are plagued with too many disagreements and arguments and conflict over things of little importance in God's program. In Isaiah chapter 2 and verse 4, Isaiah said, They will beat their swords in the pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against another. Nation. Neither shall they learn war anymore. What are you saying, preacher? Well, I am saying that each one of us had to come together and put aside our listic, our ecclesiastical sword in the, in the, in the evangelistic plowshares. 
that are stern or argumentative spears from each other towards the enemy of the gospel. That's what it's about. And there's a reason why we have to do it. I know the reason why we have to do it. The servant of God make it clear in the book Great Controversy. Page 337. This is what she says. Satan says we will cause destruction and division. We must destroy their anxiety for their own souls and lead them to criticize and to judge and to accuse and condemn one another and to cherish selfishness and enmity. For these sins, God banishes us from his presence. And all who follow our example would meet a similar fate. I don't want to dot every and cross every T because we have all kind of people listening. I'm telling where it comes from. I'm telling what the servant of God says. The spirit of prophecy is not the Bible. All it does is amplify the Bible. And there are counsels in the spirit of prophecy that is adapted to every aspect of life. God used the spirit of prophecy to guide his church, to counsel his church, and lead us in the way of life. I want us to turn... To Colossians chapter 3. And we're going to read a few verses. The book Colossians. Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians. Chapter 3. Verse 11. It reads thus. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew. Circumcision nor uncircumcision. Barbarian. Scythian. Born or free, but Christ is all and in all. And if Christ is in you and in me, how can we have argument against each other? What does that say? Christ is not in you. And the text goes on. 12, verse 12. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, what? Bowels of mercies, what else? Kindness and humbleness of mind and meekness and long suffering. And verse 13, forbearing one another and what? Forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you. Do he also? Then verse 14. And above all these things, put on what? Charity, which is the bond of perfection. And verse 15, what it says? And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which you also you are called in one body. And be he thankful. Verse 11, if you paraphrase it, it tells me if we, here I am and there you are, we must say no to those things that separate. Here we say no to the wars between the developed and developing brethren. We must say no to anything that splinters between elders and members. We must say no to the arrows that splinters the cross of Christ. Jesus, our great connector, he crossed the great divide and traveled from heaven to earth to unite what Satan tried to separate. Satan built walls that God brings us together in Christ. So today, our motto shall be no to all that divides and yes to all that unites. Look at verse 12. Let's go back to it. It says what? 
Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long suffering, these gifts, man, are the gifts of the Spirit. And these gifts bring unity. Being clothed with these spiritual gifts is easy when we're alone at home than when we are with the crowd. Being clothed with these gifts and talking about these gifts are two different things. Having the truth is one thing and living the truth is another thing. But it must help us to understand this and it's rough. Let me say it this way. There will be tight pain, Sabbath keeping, spirit of prophecy believing, vegetarians in hell. Because if knowing the truth is what it takes to earn salvation, all of us would be heaven bound. God wants us to use the power of truth not to change only the world around us but to change ourselves. Change our hearts. He wants a transformation in our lives individually. There's one thing to say that the Bible is the word of God. It's another thing to allow the word of God to change our life. It is one thing to say that the, I believe that Christ died for my sins. It's another thing to allow the grace of God to fill my life. It's one thing to say the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God, but it's another thing to experience the peace of the Sabbath day. So when Paul tells us in Colossians, I tell the Colossians to show kindness and compassion and humility and gentleness and patience. What he's saying to them is live it, talk it, and walk it. He's getting there, giving us the same one. Let me read to you a statement that's coming from the book Spiritual Gifts. And I'm giving you the page, page 284 and page 285. Write it down and check on me. Spiritual Gifts, page 284 and 285. This is what it says Preachers should have no scruples to preach the truth. As it is in the word. I'm talking here, having no doubt. As long as it's morally right, say it. Let the truth out. I have been shown that why ministers have not been successful is because they're afraid to hurt feelings, fearful not being, for not being cautious. So they lower the standard of truth. And conceal, if possible, the peculiarity of our faith. And I saw that God could not make such successful. The truth must be made pointed. And the necessity of a decision urged. And as Paul, shepherds are crying peace and are preaching smooth things. The servant of God must cry aloud, spare not, and leave the result to God. I know Paul had to tell the Galatians, the Galatians 2.16, tell them some hard things. And what he said in the end? Have you become my enemy because I tell you the truth? 
Now everybody don't have any meat. I'm just telling you the Lord secret. That is good for you. It's good for me. So Paul is telling the Colossians, live it now. Preach it. Live it. That's what God wants us to do. That's why I'm a preacher. You know, there's a text in Matthew chapter 7 and verse 12. Let's go there. Matthew chapter 7 and verse 12. I'm using the Bible here. Let's see what Jesus himself said. Matthew 7 verse 12. He said where? Therefore, all things whatsoever he would that men should do to you, what? Do he even so to them. For this is the law under Therefore, all things we wish that men should do to you, do to them, because this is the law and the prophets. And what do you call that? We call that the whole law. And what does it mean? Let's try to pick it apart. What does it mean? The golden rules means that you must slow down to listen. Slow down to empathize. Slow down to restate. As we focus ourselves on the golden rule, the question is, does it question your stereotype the way we live? Does the golden rule question the way we live? Are the stereotype of living? Rich people are smarter than poor people. Men should lead and women should follow. Young men is better than the old. White is better than the black. Does the golden rule mean that we have to erase our distinctions? Our preferences? Does it mean that we must erase our class? Our culture? Does it mean that we must erase our maleness? Our femaleness? No! No! What the golden rule is saying is this. Never hurt. Never exploit. Never put down another based upon their features. So if you follow the golden rule. And I like chocolate. You like vanilla. And you're following the golden rule. What kind of ice cream are you going to get? If you like home cooked meals. And your mates like to go out on special occasions. And you're following the golden rule. Where will you suggest that you go to celebrate his birthday? just trying to make a point. If you like efficiency and good results, and we're following the golden rule, do not give an assignment. You're just 10 minutes late. So what I'm trying to say here that the principle behind the golden rule is this. If we treat others in a way make them feel respectful and considerate, they'll likely respond to you in a positive way. Let's look at verse 13 again. Where are we? Ephesians. Ephesians in second verse. Chapter 3 and verse 13. I was in Matthew. We go to Ephesians. Go back to Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 13. There's a point there that we got to raise. Verse 13 says what? Not Ephesians. Colossians. My mistake. 
the, the Philippians after Philippians is Colossians. Chapter 3 and verse 14. But mine is 6. Okay? The text says what? Forbearing one another. Forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgive you, so also do ye. We cannot ask for forgiveness before we extend forgiveness. That's why you're saying, your Father, pray, forgive us, Lord, as we forgive those that trespass against us. Right? The forgiving spirit is not just for the benefit of the person who are forgiving. It's an experience of grace for the person who forgives. So, there is much that we need forgiveness for. If you look at verse 14, says what? And above all these things, put on charity, the bond of perfect, perfectness, and let the peace of God rule in your heart. To which also he occur in one body. Be thankful. So Paul speaks of the glue of unity. You know what is the glue of unity? Love! Unity is not produced by new rules, uh, but by love. Unity is not brought about by amendment and, 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 and uh, uh, to church principles, but by hearts of love for brethren. Unity will come, will not come because the church has been reorganized. But when our hearts have been transformed. Unity will only come when we fall on our knees and ask God for forgiveness. You know what our team do? We are death to unity. That's unity. And to do better together means that you must adhere to ten projections. Projection number one. Pray for your pastor. You got to pray for him. Anytime somebody steps out to do battle for God, say then fight. Pray for him and his family. Affirm them. You see, pastoring in this world is a very difficult job. You don't know that? I'm letting you know. Because sometimes what happens is that my early days I used to function in areas where pastors couldn't do. And I know what it's all about. You got to pray for them. Pray for their families. Sometimes pastoral stress has a way to leak in the family. Release them some time from constant ministry that they have some time for renewal, man. And thank God for this, we call it um, uh, memorial occasion. We want to refresh themselves and be energized. And at the same time, let me say this. You got to feed yourself spiritually because it is not the role of the pastor to force grass in the mouth of the sheep. You got to feed yourself. When you go to school, you can only listen to what the teacher says. Just help yourself, man. Then we have to bond with one another. As, as elders and members, we have to bond with one another. We got to pray for one another, support one another as we grow together in ministry. We got 
to follow the pastor's leading. I am saying this. The pastor is given the gift of a prophet. And we have to take our cues from him. You can't put a steering wheel at every seat. We can exercise the spiritual gifts that we have as we bond together to carry on this ministry. You know, Paul defines the church in Ephesians 1 and verse 22. In Ephesians 4, 16, he defines the church as the body of Christ. That is joined together. Knitted together. By every joint that is supplied. And without unity, the church ceases to be a church. As the remnant church of Jesus Christ, we will not only lose our identity, but we will fail to achieve this, the, the, the specific mission which God has, has um, conferred to us. And there are four ways we can achieve unity. We achieve unity by integration. We achieve unity by transformation. We achieve unity by the Holy Spirit. And we achieve unity in Christ. Four ways. So by integration, you remember Jesus said in John 17, 20 to 26, he talks about his prayer for his children. He prayed for his children. He prayed for us. That, he, that, may be, that we may be one as he is with his father. Is one. Right? We share oneness. And he expects the church to be in the self same way. Christ is the great unifying element. And without Christ, there is no unity. Various different views coiled together or integrated together as one diversity disappears and unity will reign. When diversities are magnified, unity is lost. Without unity, as I said, the church ceases to be a church. Do you know why? Because we will act in a way contrary to our mission. Our mission is to grow and increase in, in members, by numbers, and also the quality of our Christian experience. So integration is very important. The second word you have to pay attention to is transformation. Hebrews 12, 1 and 2 says that. Be beseech you by the mercy of God to present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is indeed a reasonable service. Verse 2. And be not confirmed to this world, but be he transformed by the renewing of your mind as may prove what is acceptable and perfect will of God. The word transformation is the same word. That is used for transfiguration. The Greek word for that is metamorpho. Means come from two expressions. Meta means change. And morphe means form. So God wants us to change our form. Change our character. Changes must be seen or every Every, uh, every way of life. Each person must get rid of that ego-centered spirit and become changed by, 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 by dedicating ourselves entirely to God as a living sacrifice. And the result 
with the personal relationship without conceit. Not seeing, as Brother Reed was saying this morning, myself better than any other. And there are four different kinds of attitudes, you know. There's a superior attitude, I'm better than you. The inferior attitude, I'm not as good as you, so I stay aside from you. So we stay from each other because you're superior and I'm inferior. Right? And then there is the, what you call, the hopeless attitude. I'm not good. You're not good. So you stay from me. You stay from me. But none of us is good. Then there is what you call the accepting attitude. And this is the kind of what you call Christian attitude where we accept each other on the same basis. That's what you call the Christian kind of attitude. And God wants a transformation in our lives. And how does this transformation come about? This transformation come about when we are born again. When we become new creatures. When Jesus lives in me. There's one formula to that, you know. Humility plus submission plus sacrifice is equal to transformation. You hear what I say? Humility plus submission plus sacrifice is equal to transformation. In other words, I must humble myself. I must submit myself. I must be willing to make the sacrifice that the gospel is asking for then the result would be transformation. So beside transformation, as I was saying, we're talking about the presence of the Holy Ghost among us. You know, 4 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1 and 1 to 3, talks about, I mean, 1 and 31, talks about Christ. The unity of one body. As a matter of fact, let me read 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1 and 31. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, yes. I think I have it right. Yes, here you have it on the board, on the wall. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I will not have you ignorant. Right? And then verse 31. 31 says what? Covet earnestly the best gift. And yet show I unto you a more excellent way. God said don't covet. But yet covet the best gift. Anything that would help you in the way of righteousness, covet that. Anything that makes you better, that's what God is saying to us. So the unity of the church is a, is a spiritual matter which results from the action of the Holy Spirit. Unity does not come by goodwill or by vote or convenience or co a compromise, rules or amendment. Holy Spirit produces that kind of unity as a true integration of the members in order to constitute the church. So there is no such thing as the Adventist Church of Africa and the Adventist Church of the Caribbean and the Adventist Church of America. One church! Wherever you go, the Seventh-day Adventist Church. So, Come to the point where we must understand the destruction of unity and the altering of doctrines are evils that will mar our identity and attack the work of the Holy Spirit. So finally, we go to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1. Verse 1 to 16 makes some points there. We're not going to read everything. But just going to make the point I want to raise. Ephesians, Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians. Chapter 4 and verse 
1. It says, Therefore, prison of the Lord Jesus Christ, beseech you to walk worthy of the vocation where it here call. And if you read on and on, then you find that Paul says in verse 4, there is one body, one spirit. Um, even as we are calling to one hope of one calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, and Father of all, above all, and through all, and in all. Mm. In verse 3, what he says in verse 3, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. This is the picture of the complete unity ecclesiastically. This is the picture of unity morally, spiritually, doctrinally, missiologically, and theologically. That's the kind of unity that God wants among us. In short, we must live as individual members. Live as individual Christians. But remember that you are united to the body of Christ. Right? So we got to talk unity. Live unity. Preach unity. Say no to all that divides and yes to all that unites. Stay away from them. As I conclude, there are once two men, a father and a son. And the son left home, rejected his father. But in a far country, he came to his senses and repented of his sins and returned home from a long way off. His father saw him and embraced him. And he said, Father, I have sinned. I am not worthy to be called a son. Let me just be a servant. Let me clean the stable. Let me wash the dishes and sweep the floors and polish the brass. Father said to the son, what you have done has caused your mother and me more pain than you can understand. Don't you know that there is not enough stables for you to clean, not enough dishes for you to wash, not enough floors for you to sweep. You, can, you cannot pay for the suffering you have caused. The only way we can let you in to this family is to forgive you. I forgive you, my son. Welcome home. I'm saying to you that soon and very soon, soon and very soon, Jesus will burst through that great, uh, eastern sky and in, in, the, um, in the heavenly ga uh, gates. To take us home. And we'll be tempted to say, Lord, we are not worthy to be your children. Let us be your servant. Let us just clean those golden streets and dust the pearly gates and clean the mansions of those who are worthy. And Jesus would reach forth his nail pierced hands and say, Don't you understand? The pain that you have caused me, there's not enough streets for you to sweep. Not enough gates for you to dust. Not enough streets or mansions for you to clean. And the only way I can let you in is to forgive you. I forgive you because I love you. Welcome home, my children. And today, listening to this message, wherever you are, I want to commit myself to Jesus. I want to commit myself for service. I want to commit myself for witness. I want to commit myself to prayer. The question is, how many of you are willing to commit yourself to unity? To 
to make unity in this church more important than your own personal opinion. How many of you want to do that? Wherever you are, virtually speaking, wherever you are, God is asking you to commit yourself so that it, to him so that his work with the success. The question is, are you willing to submit yourself to the transforming power of the Holy Ghost? If this is your desire, send to your feet. Because you have purpose in your mind, you want to follow him all the way, you want to commit yourself to unity so that his program would be a success. And at this time, I want our dear elder to step forward and make a special prayer on our behalf of commitment and dedication to God in his service. And I look forward to that day and pray for that day. And let us march together, move together, sing together, journey together with one leader, Jesus Christ. God bless you. Amen. amen and amen this word of God is no ordinary word that came from the mouth of God's man servant this is no ordinary message that came through God's man servant I received it because I want God to change my heart I receive it because the church has to be united. And as your first elder, your servant of God, I want unity to start with me. I receive it, elder. And I'm asking those of you who received it, not just by the showing of hands, this is a serious recommitment. Step forward. The word of God says, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me. And if you see anything in there that's not worthy, Lord, change me. Change Sherma Baptist and bring me to your everlasting glory. Anybody else want that change? We're going into a serious series. It's no joke. The devil is playing games. And he is on the territory, God's territory. We're taking that back. Amen? We're taking God's territory back. But the Bible tells us by the love which we show one to another, then the world will see us. You come forward. Because in your heart, you have decided that unity in God's house begins with me. Amen. Amen, my young people. Amen. You stood. Amen. You see, unity started way back when. And I love the, mo the story of Moses. Because when Moses went to Egypt, and Pharaoh, mommy, mighty, was tired. He said, you can go. Moses said, no, wait a minute. I am not doing this with only the old people. People like Sister Baptist already in her 60s. She ain't got no energy. She's been battered by cancer, one, two, three, four, five. No arthritis stepping in. Nah, I'm going to take Sister Baptist because she'll talk. But I'm taking the young with me. Amen. So this morning, our young people are on the battlefield for God. Say amen, church. Amen. So as you answer to the call to start with you to unite God's church, we say glory to God. There's still time for somebody else. You ask God to search you this morning. I'm going to end. Search you this morning. Know your heart. There's something you're holding on to. Maybe you just don't like Sister Baptist. Maybe you just don't like Ella Brown. Maybe you just can't stand Sister Glenda because she's all cute. Maybe you can't stand Sister Ashton. Now is the time that you can search yourself and ask God to change you. Unity, whether you want to do it or not, it's up to you, but God has given you that chance to come to him. There's no need for animosity because the Bible said 
If we regard in iniquity in our heart, God will not hear us. I'm not preaching the sermon because I'm not a preacher. The preacher did his job already. I'm just appealing to you as you give your all to God. And so, Father God, in the mighty name of your Son, Jesus Christ, we come humble before you. We come before you, dear God, because we are lacking. We are lacking humility. We are lacking a forgiving spirit. We are lacking compassion. We are lacking love, dear God. Father God, we are lacking holiness and wholesomeness. But we come to the source, the source of the giver of everything. The source who said, come unto me, all those who are labor and heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. God, Papa, God, you know some of us are tired of playing church. Papa, God, some of us are sad tired of trying to be holy. Papa God, we're tired and been so tired, but we come this morning because your man servant invited us to your word. Help us, Father God. Help us, God, to lay ourselves down. Help us, God, to lay our selfishness down. Help us, God, begin with me, your man, your lady servant, to put my differences aside. And I come through your Holy Spirit, through the power of your love, asking you to begin with me to forgive me, Lord Jesus. Cleanse me, O oh God, and make me holy. So when I speak, when I go out to speak, when I tell somebody Jesus loves them, him or her, that it will be real. Father, your people are standing here, each and every one of us standing in the need of prayer. Each and every one of us as they stand before the altar, even those who was afraid to walk up their God or whatever it is that God, they don't want to be judged. I pray, Heavenly Father, that you will transform our lives. You see, the man service remind us about the metamorphosis that comes through prayer. And it reminds me, oh God, of when Jesus Christ went to pray. He took his favorite ones with him. And while he was praying, during his prayer time with you, dear God, he became changed. Jesus Christ, who had no sin, he taught us that through prayer, transformation will come. So God, we pray for that transformation. Forgive us, dear God, where we have sinned. And as we say, unite our hearts to fear your name, we rebuke the devil who tells us you cannot change. Just do it for this moment. It will look good. We rebuke that spirit, oh God. We rebuke the spirit of unbelief. We rebuke the spirit of our young people, their God of rejection, of thinking they're not good enough, or they've gone too far. God, we rebuke the spirit over our musicians, their God, who tell them you have time. Just play the music and give them what they want and play the game. Lord, we rebuke that in the mighty name of Jesus. We rebuke the spirit, dear God, of doubt from our AV team. And ask mighty God that you move on them in a mighty way. We rebuke the spirit of our young, our old, our indifferent ones, dear God. Even now, Father God, we rebuke the spirit that says play games. Play it, faith until you make it. We don't have time for that, dear God. So mighty God, we take it to you right now because we want to be real right now in this moment. Change our hearts. Change our hearts. Change our prayers, dear God. Change our desire. God, as a people, we can only be changed by you. So you see, dear God, each and every person, dear God, right now. Right now, move, mighty God. Move, Holy Spirit, and hear our cries. Hear our cries. We want to lift up your manservant, dear God, Elder Brown. Thank you, dear God, for filling him with such a message. My heart burned within me, dear God, and I pray, dear God, that those online who are listening, there's this young person, I don't know the age, dear God, who requests that she wants 
prayer for her family and she's thinking about baptism. Holy Spirit, let that move right now. And we pray for Brother Enrique de God who's going to be baptized very soon. Lord Jesus, I pray that each and every person under our voice will say, I surrender. I surrender. So God, the purpose of coming to the altar is to say, yes, Lord, we are going forward united as a people. So thank you, God, and continue to unite our hearts, we pray. Forgive us what we have sinned, and we say glory to God, because we have been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Oh, God, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for changing our hearts. Unite us, oh, Lord, we pray in Jesus' mighty name. We say, God, we thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Bless your people, oh, God. Amen and amen. Amen. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. 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 Please stand for the closing song. five more minutes. We're asking Sister Erica to come up. We're asking all our elders to join. 
Sister Mighty, we ask you to join us up here. Mommy Mighty, we ask you to join. And anyone who has been very close to Erica, who feel impressed to join us up here, we're going to have a special prayer for Erica who is leaving, moving to Massachusetts. We're going to miss her. And as your elder also, I want to let the church know that we won't be here. Myself and my family will be traveling next Friday for Grenada to bury my brother. So we'll be off for two Sabbaths. Keep us in prayer. So just, I just want the church to know if you don't see me, I'm not gallivanting elsewhere. I'm in Grenada having a good time after the funeral service. Amen. Also the desires according to your riches and glory. In Jesus' precious name, we pray for Elder Baptiste as they travel to Grenada, her and her family, to finalize her brother. I pray, God, you give them the strength. I pray, Father, that you grant them traveling mercies, take them safely, bring them back safely. May they also have put in a little bit of fun. Grant them your blessings, we 